Today on the show, we are talking about the Rivian R1T. That is right. We are going to talk about the little electric truck that could, because this one is the one that I think was the, kind of the most interesting out of all of the trucks. You know, the Cybertruck looks cool, but it's like way too futuristic. Uh, the Lightning to me just looks too much like the normal F-150. Um, and this one here, well, it had that nice little bit of, let's pop this up here and look at it. It had that nice little bit of futuristic look to the front of it. But yet you look at the side of the thing and it still looks like a pickup truck. And uh, I like the size of this thing. I think for EV, I think uh, more of that midsize pickup truck is the perfect size for it. So I want to get into this truck and I want to uh, I want to maybe do a build and price on this thing. So uh, hang on, charge up and let's get to this right now. All right, one of the key things to me is Rivian has a pretty nice website, man. I mean, just the look at it. You can see right here, the look of this website looks really good. And uh, let's enter their uh, their old build page here. So as you can see, we got just the basic uh, the basic package. And uh, this is called the Adventure Package. And let's uh, see what it's going to start at about $73,000. And yes, $73,000. But remember, this is a startup company. Uh, they don't have the big backing. They don't have the big power that uh, Ford does. I've a hundred years of building these things. They, uh, these guys, even though they are backed by Ford and Amazon and a few other companies, they, uh, they've had their engineer and do the, their own way. And I respect them for that. But as you can see, the side of this thing, once again, this looks like a pickup truck, which I'm happy about. I mean, the cyber truck you look at and you're like, okay, that's kind of cool that it just looks so crazy. But at the end of the day, I think most, uh, most adapters want their uh, futuristic vehicle to be uh, somewhat look the shape that you're used to and you know the f-150 like i said earlier the f-150 i think it was just a little too close to home with the f-150 that uh the the lightning just is uh i mean it's a good capable vehicle but i just kind of like uh i like what rivian's done here and uh we can see from the sides here you can look at that once again i love the uh i kind of like these odd halo lights they have going on there and that light bar running across there and i believe in the back it has the same light bar as you can see right there Pretty cool, man. I uh, Once again, you go tow hooks. It, it looks like a truck. All right, so let's get into this build and price, and we will go from there. So you got first thing we got is dual motor option or the quad motor option. Uh, let's compare motors real quick and just see what happens there. So quad motor, uh, our quad motor all-wheel drive is the most capable system, and it features one motor for each wheel. Now, that's pretty impressive, one motor for each wheel. So I do like that quite a bit. Um, and I like the fact that, uh, you know, they're independent. And I know a lot of times like in off-roading, you know, people want lockers for, uh, to help with traction. If each wheel is its own thing, like you have the ultimate traction that way, but, uh, let's see what the dual motor says. So a dual motor is what it says. You get one up here and one up here. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's kind of like a normal four wheel drive setup. So, uh, let's close this out. I think, uh, for $8,000 though, do I need that much traction in this thing? I don't know, man. I'm not, I don't know how far of a venturing I'm going to take this thing. I don't know how far I can go off the beaten path till I get one. So uh, let's just go ahead and we're going to stick with the all wheel drive because the quad motor for $8,000, you know, we're already looking at $79,000 for this vehicle. So that's a lot of money already. So we haven't even added any kind of options to this thing. So next, next up is the batteries. As you can see, you got a standard pack for 260 uh, miles. You've got a large pack for 320 miles and you've got the max pack for 400 miles. Now, something I want, I want you to understand with EV and I'm looking at you, you know, kind of like me who uh, I'm not an early adapter to this stuff. I'm kind of late to the game, but I want to know more about it. Um, much like the fuel economy numbers that uh, you get for a gasoline engine, sometimes these are not as most accurate as can be. So if you look at that 260, depending on the weather conditions, depending on how much payload you actually have in the vehicle, are you running four people in the vehicle? Those are not your pure numbers. 260 is the most premium, optimal position that you can be. It's the, uh, you know, it's just probably one person in that vehicle and they're going across town. I, I'm not sure on how Rivian, uh, you know, comes with their numbers, but that's kind of how it goes. Now, the large pack with 320 miles, you know, if you're looking at 320 miles, you're like, well, that's not bad. That could get me on a pretty decent trip. Well, put luggage in the back of this thing, you know, put your family in this thing. Suddenly at 320 miles, it might be like 280. And then that's not using any of the, uh, you know, air conditions and stuff because you're going to lose about 3% when you do your air conditions. So uh, the large pack. And then if you look at this max pack for $16,000, that is right. $16,000 for that, but 400 plus miles. And, you know, in reality, that's probably like 360, 370. 
I can live with that. Now it's like at 16,000 miles though. It's like you're pre-financing your, uh, your fuel ups kind of. So uh, we got to go kind of take a look at it from that way. And uh, for me, I always say I want the most horsepower possible with uh, gasoline powered engines. I want the most range possible with EV. So I would definitely uh, take that hit at that $16,000 and go from there. Now paint is the next option. And as you can see here, this is LA silver. And uh, I'm not much on silvers, but that is a pretty nice looking color. Uh, Glacier White, which as you can see, is a $1,750 upcharge. Man, these all these people are taking a, a page out of Jeep's uh, you know, catalog of like, hey, they'll pay for paint colors. Keep charging them. Uh, red Canyon, which you guys know I'm a sucker for red. I do love a good red on a vehicle, is a $2,500 upcharge. You've got Midnight, which is a $2,500 upcharge. You've got this Rivian Blue, which I got to see in person this past week. And I have to say, that's a nice color. I do really like that color, but that is a $2,500 upcharge. You've got the Limestone, which is a kind of a throwback, kind of a kind of a light greenish kind of... Um, I don't know. I don't know how it's like a 60s throwback color to me. Uh, that's 1750. And you've got the classic forest green. So if you're any of my Bronco people that like watching the show, that you guys know this color. And uh this forest green has been one of the most popular colors on the uh the Bronco. So uh I would imagine it's pretty popular with Rivian. Next up for twenty five hundred dollars, you've got El Cap Granite, which is a nice dark gray. I like that a lot. And then finally, you've got the Compass Yellow, which is uh, it's not like that canary yellow where it's real bright. This is kind of a muted yellow. And I won't say it's like mustard because it's not even that close. But uh, I, I like that color a bit a lot. But you know, you got to consider each one of these things is an upcharge. And man, do you just stick with the basics that uh the silver that is no upcharge? Or do you, uh, you know, you're already at $89,000. Do you go, hey, I'm in this deep. Why not go a little further? And I'm going to say I'm going to go a little bit further. And uh, we're going to play the Wheel of uh, Fortune here. And uh, I'm going to guess I want the Rivian Blue. And like I said earlier, I seen this color in person this weekend and was very impressive. Uh, the vehicle is very impressive, by the way. But seeing this in person, this color, I love the way this Rivian, they have the little orange around it. It just pops. All the logos seem to pop really well. Let's see if we can get the back of this thing. You can see, once again, a little bit of orange detail in there. Looks really good. So that's for $2,500 at, at the price I'm currently at. That's a drop in the bucket. Uh, paint protection. So you can get a uh, Expel paint protection film on the front of the vehicle for $1,500. I always say this. You can have this done cheaper at a local shop. Uh, and then you you get to see the quality of it. Uh, sometimes these things, these uh, paint protection films delay trying to get vehicles to the customers. So I would rather uh, wait on that and I'll just uh, get it off the truck, schedule that in the next week or two after picking the vehicle up and we will go from there. So next up, we got wheels and tires. And as you can see, not a bad let's get, let's get to the side here not a bad looking uh not a bad looking uh wheel and tire package right there but i think we could do better so a 20 and 20 uh two inch wheels reduce estimated range so this in here is a 21 inch it's a road deuce it's a machine aluminum wheel uh painted with high gloss uh paint on there you can kind of see it uh but I don't know. Let's see what our options are here. So this, ooh, see how the vehicle lifted up a little bit? So this is a 20-inch all-terrain tire uh, with a machined aluminum wheel. Uh, estimated 40 miles range reduction. Now, once again, remember how I said we're at the max pack of 40, uh, 400 uh, miles max pack? And in reality, you're probably only get like 380. Now we're really taking this thing down because of those heavy tires. Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily the wheels. I think it's the tires. but if I'm buying a pickup truck, I, I kind of want to customize the pickup truck how I want. And I do like these wheels quite a bit. Uh, but let's see what else we got here. Uh, there's another 20 inch estimated reduction with the large battery pack is 40 mile range. Uh, here's another one. Ooh, those black. That looks really good. As you can see, once again, you're losing 40 miles with these things. And I bet almost all of them have that. So here's a 22. Oh, you're only going to lose 21 miles of range with this one here. Um, and uh, I don't really like that wheel that much. And estimated 21 miles of range lost with this one. So uh, I believe, yeah, here's the one that comes with it. Uh, that's not good enough for me, though. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add add these. I like it. For $2,500, I want my pickup truck to look how I want. And I think that's a very good-looking vehicle. I think that, that that's kind of a mean-looking pickup truck. So I like that. Let's see. Next up is interior. Whoa. Now, something, something the EVs have really pushed in, uh, I think, pushed forward and pushed the big three. To kind of do is better interiors. 
I think when Tesla come in and simplified the dashes, made them look really nice, I think that was a wake-up call. And I think Rivian's taken that and just maybe went on a little step further with just a little class to what they've done there. But I do like, I, for one, I love their logo. It's a very powerful-looking logo. And why Kia and some of these other brands who are trying to rebrand themselves just do something cool like that, man. Like Kia's, that's a whole nother story. But I do like the big monitor you get here. I do personally, I like push buttons and everything's like push to touch on this stuff. So I don't know. I'm sure I would adapt to it, but I don't know. I just like physical buttons. Um, but I have a feeling why you see physical buttons not on these things is because power consumption. I really think it comes down to that. Why if you, on the screen, it's less power consumption and they're looking for every watt they can save in these things. But uh, you should see that center of that stack. I love the look at the P there. Nice, crisp, um, nice, crisp font to what they're doing. And uh, the steering wheel, you're getting a real steering wheel. You're not getting some uh, flight yoke, which I kind of like uh, dead pedal there. You're getting your, your two pedals there and lots of uh, lots of space in here. But we're here for some color options. So this is Black Mountain, which is included. Thank God, because everything else seems to be an upcharge. Uh, what's next? Oh, man. This is the Ocean Coast. Now, if you had a white vehicle with this white interior, that would be pretty pimp, man. But I'm scared that all the dyes of my, my clothes might eventually wear into these seats. And then it's a pickup truck. I'm going to do pickup truck things with it. And I don't want to kind of tarnish the look of this, especially for $2,000 upgrade already. So let's see what the next is. Uh, black mountain with a dark ash wood. That is very classic. Uh, adding wood trim to a truck. I don't know something about it. It looks really, really cool. Uh, and there's no upcharge for that. Let's see. Here's kind of a mixture of the ocean coast with the dark ash wood. Uh, once again, you're getting those white seats look really do look really nice. I do like it quite a bit. Uh, and finally, Ooh, I kind of like this forest edge with a warm ash wood. Now I do like that, that I wish you could get this red trim over here i think it would look really cool but is what it is uh if i have to choose out of all these let's see here's the uh, initial one again i do I, that right there is pretty nice the white looks great but i don't know about the wear of it uh this black mountain with the dark ash wood uh looks great uh the mixture of the two i do like that quite a bit and then we've got this uh four sheds green i will say i'm gonna take the four sheds green off because i think like the green i would it just wear on me too quick i like it but I just kind of feel like it would uh, wear on me. And for $2,000, nah, I'm good. So I'm going to go with the Black Mountain plus the Dark Ash Wood. And I don't know if they got any more pictures of this thing. Oh, here we go. Uh, look at the big glass top on this thing. Just just beautiful. I love the seats. I do love how they've integrated that little bit of color with it. The seats look kind of futuristic. But I, the way the shoulder support and everything is has to be comfortable on a ride. Uh, very cushiony. I, it looks like this is a split uh, armrest, too, so each side can get into it. So let's go to next part. We're going to outfit this thing just a little bit with some adventure gear. Now, one of the camping packages here that uh, you can't really see, they've got it matted out right now, was a cook center. Like if you're going camping with this, you bring out, it hooks up to your battery, and it's an electric range and, and some options like that, which is really cool. But I want to say they were estimating it was going to be a nine grand nine grand package. And no, I would not be interested in nine grand for a basically electric range. Um, but it's cool that they have that option. So uh, we'll go with that. Rooftop tent. No, I would deal with my buddies over at CVT or somebody, you know, for a rooftop tent. Let's see. All terrain. So this is looks to be a skid plate. Reinforced underbody shield. Uh, engineered to absorb, deflect, and dis distribute, if I could say it. Uh, impacts extreme off-road conditions. Well, I'm probably never going to do that extreme off-road conditions with this thing. So I don't know that for $2,000 more I need that. Uh, front tow hooks, which uh, I believe they're already on there. Yep. You can see them right there, front to hooks, which shows included with our package that we've chosen. Uh, Max Tracks recovery boards. No, uh, $500 a pair. I'm not interested in that. Uh, this is the kind of bummer. Full-size spare for $900. That's, um, I'm assuming you're getting the same wheel, or I'm hoping you're getting the same wheel for that price. Uh, but no, $900. I may eventually uh, end up just doing my own thing with the wheels anyways. So I'm going to pass on that one. Uh, all weather floor mats. Yes. Select that for $200. You're never going to notice that in your car payment. But I think, uh, I think the, uh, the aftermarket world, you know, there's weather techs and all those that do a great job, but I think that the manufacturers have stepped up and they, they have these things laser cut now so precise that they fit perfect in these vehicles. So for $200 all day long, I'm going to add that because I'm going to doing truck things, man. I'm going to have dirty feet. I don't want my pretty new Rivian all messed up. 
Off-road recovery kit for $600. I can tell you right now, there is not $600 worth of anything right there. So no. Uh, we can get a field kit with, uh, you know, looks like an emergency little kit uh, for 150 bucks. No, thank you. What other options we got here? Uh, manual tonneau cover for eighteen hundred dollars. Uh, I don't know if that's one thing I will say with this brand. I don't know if Rivian might be the only game in town for that. So if you wanted a tonneau cover, it might be worth it to grab it from Rivian. But uh, for now, I'm going to pass on that. I think eventually aftermarket will kick in and uh, make something for it. Uh, the crossbars for five hundred dollars per pair. That is uh that's pretty expensive. Uh, but I can see why look at that glass top on this thing. You don't want, you don't want that all messed up. And, uh, so they do a nice job there, but I'm going to pass, uh, let's see bike racks and all that stuff. No, I'm, I'm good. Uh, charging now, this is, uh, this is something you need to look at because it's something, if you buy it, you're used to buying a gas powered vehicle. You may not, uh, you may not be anticipating this one, but it is charging because you got to charge your vehicle. And a lot of people are going to want to charge at home. So over the night, that's when the cheapest rates are for electricity. So you want to charge at home. But it looks like a Rivian uh, wall charger is the fastest way to charge your Rivian at home, delivering up to 25 miles of range per hour of charging. So uh, that's pretty cool. And uh, for $750, I'm going to hit yes. Now, what I have a feeling is that doesn't include installation fee on that. So you're going to have to hire an electrician to, uh, to take care of that for you. But I definitely think it's uh, worth it to have something at home where you can charge your vehicle because the old 110 is not going to get the job done. I can guarantee you that. So uh, next is our overview. So we're looking at our Rivian that we just built. Uh, solid looking vehicle. I like this. Once again, I do like this vehicle quite a bit. It's probably my favorite electric vehicle right now. Uh, looks great. Looks tough. Looks like a pickup truck that you might see in the near future and uh might be in the near future in my driveway so uh let me know what you think of this thing i think it's pretty freaking cool so um in the comments below you know what to do let me know what you think of these rivian pickup trucks so whether it be two-wheel drive four-wheel drive shockingly these electric vehicles we're all gonna be forced to drive one these days this is your all-terrain nation i'm your host david boyden we're out peace everybody love y'all